Now for a broader look at the commodity space and also particularly honing in on gold, Tim Evans from Longleaf Trading Group joins us now live from the CME in Chicago. Tim, hello to you. Thank you for being with us. We'll come to gold just in a moment. I'm really keen to get your insights here, but just wanted to get your take on some of the broader price action that we are seeing in today's trade. Well, I mean, we, uh, we came in, in today relatively quiet. Um, yeah, I mean, in, in the terms of the commodity space, you know, obviously it was uh, a bit of an aberration to see uh, crude oil uh, trading in the black here uh, throughout today's trading session. You know, I heard your comments earlier as you were kind of introducing our segment here and, you know, referring to some short covering. And I th really think that's, you know, uh, at the bottom of the price action that we saw. I mean, it was very light volume. You know, in Asia, uh, there's a Muslim holiday um, being celebrated today, so you know there's not a lot of uh, liquidity in the market today. So the market was able to drift a little higher, but you know I don't think it's really anything more than that. You know it wasn't anything really fundamental driving price action. You know so I, I think a lot of you know the shorts that were able to catch a nice move and going into the end of the week last week were able to you know take some of those profits off the table, which allowed the market to uh, catch a small lift today into the close. So let's talk gold price action there because we did see uh, somewhat of a fat finger taking place in terms of some of those overnight um, price performance. Just guide us through this. Well, that's I tell you, that's one very interesting way to uh, start a trading week. You know, when you're enjoying your uh, Cheerios and milk uh, and watching gold collapse, you know, twenty five dollars in, in a minute. That's a pretty alarming, alarming way uh, to start your day. Yeah, I mean, we, we saw 1.8 million um, uh, ounces of gold trade within a minute. You know, to kind of put that in perspective, that's 18,149 contracts. You know, if you look at that from a kind of a dollar standpoint, that's $2.25 billion worth of gold that traded hands in that minute time frame. Um, you know, I, like I said before, you know, there's a, a thin market uh, environment given the, the Asian holiday. You know, so there wasn't a lot of liquidity in the market to absorb that. So, you know, when that big order or series of orders came in, that was really able to take the market down lower and much faster than it normally would based on the lack of liquidity that was there. Um, you know, anyone that remembers a flash crash from 2010 or any of those, you know, really abrupt kind of algo driven market movements. I mean, that definitely, uh, you know, brought back some of those memories. Uh, Fortunately, the gold market was able to stabilize and, you know, that actually put the low print of the day in. But it was uh, definitely an eventful way to begin, for sure. But this is nonetheless part of a, a slightly broader theme. We've seen uh, gold futures falling, um, certainly suggestions that that risk appetite um, waning somewhat. Um, I mean, how, how does this feed into, uh, into the broader sphere? I mean, do we expect these prices to bounce higher once again when people have perhaps, yeah, choked on their cereal, as you, as you suggested, and, and recovered from that shock? Well, I mean, if we kind of take a step back and kind of look at the gold market overall, I mean, you can make a pretty strong case for being a buyer or seller of gold. You know, if you're looking at today, you know, just today and not really considering the future, you know, the, the fundamentals driving the market or dominating the market are very bearish. You know, when we have the dollar that has kind of found a low, we're, we're back to a 97 handle in the U.S. dollar index. Um, you know, the, as you just referenced, you know, there, there seems to be a larger risk appetite in the market. Obviously, equities are performing well. Uh, you know, the U.S. Federal Reserve going through uh, a rate height cycle, you know, talking about the lack of inflation that's in the market. So all that being said, I mean, there's a very strong case for gold going lower, you know, but if we kind of look forward, you know, there's a very strong case for gold going higher. And that's on the geopolitical front, you know, mm -hmm. following the Brexit negotiations, following the U.S. Congress trying to get this health care bill passed, you know, following the minute to minute developments in, the, in, the, in, in Britain's negotiations with the EU as part of this Brexit package. Uh, there's a lot of things that can go wrong very quickly. Uh, therefore, there's a lot of reasons to own gold as a hedge to those uncertainties, you know, so on balance, we're, you know, we're really looking at a two sided market. And, you know, what was interesting is when the market sold off so aggressively, you know, if you kind of map out the price action, if you take the lows that we saw back in December when the market bottomed and we take the high print that we saw a couple of weeks ago, you know, that low print was almost to the tick as a 50 percent retracement of that overall move. The high that we saw on Friday that we backed off from was the 
percent retracement. So anyone out there following the Fibonacci series, those are the two most valuable uh, Fibonacci retracement levels there are. So, you know, a lot of the speculation was as we were not able to get through that 38 percent retracement, sell orders kicked in and, and triggered some algorithms that took it down. But those same algorithms kick back in to buy at those, you know, dominant support levels that supported the market overnight. So I, th I think ultimately that's going to be the kind of price action we see moving forward, you know, until the market clearly has something uh, to work with, where, whether the bulls, you know, have these uncertainties that kind of overwhelm the bearish fundamentals that are in the market, or, you know, if none of these develop and these bearish fundamentals continue and dominate those uncertainties, you know, we could have a substantial move lower. But right now we're kind of caught in that middle and that choppy trade and what we're seeing, where I think we're going to see that here for a couple of weeks. Mm, unfortunately, Tim Evans, we are out of time. Great to have you with us, so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you, Natalie.